common and CEO of Cloud Organize, um, who's a platinum sponsor with this event today. Kazan uh, is an entrepreneur at heart and a learner by experience. He founded Cloud Workplace as AWS solution partner to be a catalyst for MSME success, enabling them to unlock their true potential and achieve their dreams. So with that, I welcome Kazan Kumar onto the stage. So what we do, uh, we do cloud consulting, we help organization uh, in their cloud strategy. Then uh, we do the deployment, so mostly on AWS only. So we are associated with uh, Amazon Web Services. Then we create a cloud migration strategy. It is not only lift and shift, re-platform, re-hosting, modernizing the application and everything. Then we manage the cloud operation. After migration and after deployment, we handle the entire operation for them. So we have specialized in uh, Microsoft Workflow, it's like moving uh, .NET application to .NET Core, uh, like um, moving uh, migrating database, uh, MSS, MSS database to PGCP, Aurora PGCP kind of database then. We, uh, we are managing here about uh, 22 uh, OTD platform across uh, Pan India and Bangladesh. So, Hajjai is one of the famous OTD platform, Bengali platform. Then, uh, we are into SAP infrastructure, uh, like, uh, we are not into application, SAP application. So, what we do, we help customers uh, to migrate on premises to AWS. So while migrating, let's say for example, uh, changing the platform, right, uh, IBM, uh, AIX or HPX to SAPC platform, or updating their application, updating their database, those kind of support, and intra-level 24 into 7 monitoring and support those services we provide for the SAP customers. Then uh, being a DevOps competency partner, we are, uh, uh, our people came with a lot of uh, um, open source tools, right? We are expertise in ECA, CKs, so all the services. So starting from build, migrate, and design everything we do. So cloud managed services we do in kind application optimization definitely. So after coming down, people they talk about the cost, right? 
So, you know, it's like uh, uh, in fact, how can you do the optimization to save the cost, then cloud security and go to work with certain support. So, I will ask Asis uh, from our team who is going to take uh, you through the cloud security portfolio. Asis, please. Thank you. Thank you, Rasmanji. You could see the audit is it's very down first launch. And then have an interactive section that are you going to the site. So these are the 12 services that Marketplace is providing to all the customers. So since we started uh, delivering the cloud partnership in the AWS, we see a lot of customer face service security issues. So again, it's the attempt solving them. And gradually we're building all these 12 pillars of the security that we can protect the customer in, in case of the customer data. So starting with endpoint security, SIEM solutions, and defense. So I think all our experts here we know I don't do it explain you all the details. What is SIEM and what is endpoint? So later we can start and go on the one side and the heading is there endpoint security. I need someone volunteer from you from me. This slide I'll ask you a question, not more than that. So just explain to me what is that? Like the endpoint security. Anyone can explain the definition which is not ready? In any definition, what do you think what is the endpoint security and why do you need that endpoint security? Ensuring that your endpoint vulnerability don't compromise the entire thing. Good one. Anyone else? Please help me with Endpoint security is nothing but uh, uh, securing the endpoints like computers, or the handheld devices. Sure. Right? Yes. So, in any way, how we can secure the computer or endpoint devices? It's very simple. Anyone can answer. Yeah. yeah. So, the last one, please. Yeah. Any other? DLP. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'll close up this slide. It's a good answer from everyone. So we are also dealing with uh, zero-day threats. We are detecting the zero-day vulnerability threats okay, from an endpoint device because nowadays when we are logging in, we are on data security. And if we lost a single piece of data, the organization can come into a big problem and we have huge financial loss. So, adding to yeah, zero day threats, we have IDS and IPS as endpoint solution where uh, our detection and prevention system also working together with the threat intelligence. Then we have EDL, the detection and response to the vulnerability or the threat. Then we have a DLP solution, as the map mentioned, like email gateway, and other few more threat, uh, threat protection, such as the endpoint, email risk encryption, as I mentioned, the data encryption is needed. We always follow the three rules of the security standard CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So in an endpoint protection, we cover those three pillars of the security so that we make sure our customer data is secure in the endpoint devices. So I'll go to the next slide. Anyone can, uh, I think everyone knows SIEM and so any common difference between that, who can say? I have a slide there, I have an image there, maybe you can guess from that image. Yes, please. Get some help from the export. Because I am not that expert in that case. Sample slide, I understand. So much more intelligent than SIEM? Yes. Good point. So basically, uh, having pattern understanding sort of capability in its source is compared to SIEM. Absolutely. So SIEM solution is basically like collecting all the logs. From where we collect the logs in the previous slide, we see we are placing a lot of uh, security tools in our endpoint devices. So, C will collect the logs from those endpoint devices and uh, it will coordinate those logs, collaborate with the logs, and send us alerts. Okay? But in SOAR, what happens? In SOAR solution, SOAR is having an artificial intelligence. It's, uh, if we say C is the body of the part, SOAR is the brain of our body. So, so what's the, to investigate on the logs, orchestrate, and 
to a automated response. We will have an artificial intelligence to respond to a particular threat. And in, along with that, it also integrated with other tools as well. And the main feature of the sword that the solution is called Playbook. Playbook is basically a defined, we, we define, we write some block of codes where we define how we can respond to a particular threat. Okay, we define our automated way. So this is basically the steam and sword solution. We are now partnered with the Fortinet and Val Auto Networks to provide the source solution and seed solution as well. And we have a built seed solution for us also. And we can add it customized for the customer requirement as well. The next is threat intelligence. I think this is very much important nowadays, the intelligence term. Like we are now advancing with artificial intelligence. So our friends are also getting more intelligence. So to detect that, we also need an intelligence device or intelligence tool that can detect the threat for us. Any idea? Um, threat intelligence part? Okay, I will skip this one because I already answered it. So threat intelligence is a tool which is having an artificial intelligence and machine learning power to detect the advanced threats. Okay, it, it not only follow the old signature based intelligence, it also follow the behavior based intelligence as the same maximum. <coughs> so, uh, here is the third uh, intelligence life cycle how our threat intelligence team works and how the tool works. We have a partner with Palo Network, Checkpoint, and Forcepoint. And basically, how the intelligence works, here you can see the diagram. I think everyone is aware of that. I am not going to go in detail. So it will collect all the IOCs and download it in a regular basis so that when another organization faces the issue, it can respond to that incident. Okay. So let's quickly go to the next service. Security Operation Center. Any idea? Uh, either it's a tool or service? Right. Absolutely. Any, anyone else from the next side, please? You are going to target the vaccine, right? <laughs> it's basically a separate department with different tool uh, which aggregates log from different systems. Right. Okay. So, security operations center is a process. Just depends on the people. And we have a lot of experts working on our own security operations center. We provide uh, this uh, service to the customer. So this basically core, uh, if you see the image here, uh, earlier we saw in SIM, SIM collect all the logs and gather it together and we have a threat intelligence here. Threat intelligence we already learned in the previous side. So all gathering this SIM and threat intelligence solution, okay, we gather the as a preliminary investigation, we investigate on the threat, then we try the, we prioritize the, so in, uh, we prioritize that the threat, we put some scoring in that, uh, then we try it, then we try to visualize the trade, how this can be reproduced, then we put our intelligence to our SIM solution. So that uh, human intelligence and artificial intelligence can combine together to provide a perfect human solution. And the, at the very end stage, our team again cut, uh, quarantine those devices which is already infected, and then we get, again we update it to our customer and say to our uh, brain also, threat intelligence and theme solution, so that next time they can take it forward, we don't need to put manual effort in that. Quickly go to the next one. Container security. Any idea on that? The wall is moving into only things to container based applications. <coughs> Any guess uh, why you need? Yes, please, please. Containers are uh, segmented uh, in isolated environment that is called separate device. Mm -hmm. So wherein uh, we are we are putting different applications on a different cluster. We don't know what is happening between these two applications, especially on multi-tenant, uh, single-tenant. Uh, the data uh, segregation is the most important aspect in container security, and the data flow. Yeah, well said. So in our service is provided in the container security, we provide these four stages of this starting from the container development 
We provide some SaaS tool that can scan your codes and composition analysis. We come to the next slide, it is there. At the deployment, so when we are deploying the container, that time also we need to take care of the security where we deploy the container, whether that container is secure or not. Then after deployment, so the security is not stopped there. Once we deploy the container in a container environment, again we have to uh, check whether the container is securely running or not. And at runtime also. So we have a partner with the Ben Micro, Palo and Sinai to provide a complete 360 container security starting from the registry scanning to the container scanning <coughs> and in the sandbox environment if we have. And we have pro already with Amazon we are providing the AKS container and why we are delivering that to client to provide it in a most secure way. We, we take all these precautions and very basic and we also educate the customer whenever the customer don't understand the security part of the container because people have a sticks. If you put an antivirus in the system, that will be fine or endpoint, but in container, the environment is different. If the container is again running on an end device, but if we protect the end device, that is not sufficient for the security. We have to protect the containers as well. Quickly going to the next. Configuration assessment, this is very simple. Uh, like uh, if we have any security product or anything we do, by uh, installing that product or uh, doing that activity is not sufficient. We have to provide proper configuration so that we can get the output from the tool in an optimized way. Then, vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. Uh, this is very basic also. I am not going to take much time of you on this. So we provide three types of testing black box, white box, and gray box testing. There will be our assessment how the workflow we are providing. We have partnered with Trend Micro, Palo Alto, Zang, Sonaki, Ubo, Sweeper, and Appetitics for the vulnerability scanning and uh, assessment. Now, coming to the topic, which is uh, I earlier talked in the container security during the registry time. The SaaS and SCA is basically static application security analytic testing and software composition analysis. So, why we combine these two? The static application testing is basically scanning your source code, as you know. But why we combine with SCA? Because scanning your source code is not sufficient. We have to scan. You are already using many third party products in your source code. Like any jar file, I can say, everyone can get from the jar file, the external library we are using. So we have to check whether that file is vulnerable or not. Whether there is any open source vulnerability there existing with that the particular version of the library or not. So for that, we need an SCA analysis as well. So this will be the process for flow we are following while scanning with SAS and SCA. Starting with the code repository, Jenkins pipeline, or any pipeline we support, Geo and other pipelines. <coughs> okay, and the end you can see, the ones the vulnerability is getting detected, we are uh, pushing it to the stakeholders and we are also uh, engaging our security team to solve it up. So as a development team or if you are building some product, you can feel more secure with us uh, regarding the SaaS and ACA. Now the last topic, uh, DevSecOps. So the tool till now I covered is uh, basically completes all this process of a DevSecOps environment. Starting from the planning phase, where we plan to build one application. Everyone maybe know about the DevOps, but in DevSecOps, we know uh, in DevOps, we are putting a security layer in that. So in every phase, we have added the security layers in our DevSecOps service. So what we do in planning phase, we'll also plan uh, according to your application architect, how we can put the security architecture there so that your application can get more secure. During the build phase, we also try to build our security tools, get it prepared. So whenever an application is going to production or going to an event environment, we can scan it out and get the vulnerability from that. In continuous integration phase, also we do some security scanning while we are integrating your application, different different module into single application. We also add security tools there so that we can verify whether if different modules gather together, the application is still secure. <coughs> then coming into deployment, when you are deploying into the product, we have a few vulnerability management tools also during the deployment and during the operate state, where the application is running. In running case, we already described the same source solution we also have that we implement during the operate stage or when the live application is going on. Okay. So, in combined DevSecOps with the security practice, where we implement all the tools across your security structure. 
with cloud firewall and next generation firewall. Now I would like someone to take a definition of this cloud firewall and next generation firewall. The difference is perfect. Any definition of cloud firewall, how we can represent this? Uh, so I think cloud firewalls, uh, you know, that is something which you host on cloud on VPCs and other things to ensure like you know, your cloud trust and see. Mm -hmm. Next generation firewall is pretty much it's an offering, a you know, so software and service you can see. Similarly, you know, uh, a firewall is a service can be offered, which is a SaaS based product. Instead of having your desktop application, or probably mm -hmm. instead of installing in servers, we can have a, a, a SaaS service, which is next generation firewall that can ensure security in the cloud. Oh, perfect. Please stand up pretty much. The next generation firewall is probably uh, not so good, the app based uh, security. Uh, traditionally, the we used to uh, secure based on the uh, the protocols and all those things, right? Uh, the next generation firewall usually uh, talks about the app based, uh, application based uh, uh, security. Absolutely. So, cloud firewall is nothing but a firewall as a service. That because uh, uh, we are uh, instead of handling those firewall in our infrastructure, getting it secure, we can use a cloud firewall as a service that is also being provided by us. Partnership with Fortinet and far out of again. A next generation firewall is again it's kind of a bridge to the cloud firewall or the native firewall that we use. It's also having some machine learning and artificial intelligence power. These are all the features we enjoy is out of the if we if we are using anything in the cloud, we are basically facing up this good feature of scalability, lower cost, global coverage and all. So quickly moving to the zero trust architecture. So this is uh, trending nowadays, zero trust architecture. One question, uh, I want to ask someone from the batch right now, please. I know you are ready to answer. Yes, please. Anyone, any guess what is zero trust architecture? You can read it and uh, guess and say the definition. Never trust, always verify. Any guess, please? No hands? It's actually a process that has to follow Absolutely. Zero Trust Firewall is a process. It's not like a dedicated tool. Obviously, we need some tool to make it happen, but it's a process that we need to take care of. Like AWS also provides a lot of security solutions. If we gather together and we move into the Zero Trust network, that we can successfully implement the Zero Trust architecture. So this is basically the diagram. Three things we need to follow: uh, that uh, PBSE, RBSE, ABS. I want someone to abbreviate this. The full form of PBSE. Privilege based access control. Perfect. Privilege based access control. This one, everyone knows RBSE. I don't know. The last one. Perfect. Okay. <coughs> now coming into cloud security. Everyone knows about this. Cloud security is shared between the cloud provider and the customer. But since some customer uh, requires some partner's help to make the security happen for their customer, since uh, some customer is dedicated to some development and all, so they don't need a dedicated resource to build the security. So for service, we are there. We provide the all the security mentioned in the customer section. We provide all this to our a customer to help them to build the complete cloud security structure. And quickly move to the next one. We'll see what are the AWS provided cloud security native application that we can implement to have a complete uh, customer based security. And in the customer responsibility model, in the uh, shared responsibility model from the AWS. <coughs> so this is the security roadmap on AWS. We provide IAM. Detective control, infrastructure, vulnerability detection, data protection, incident response, and compliance. It will not take much time to quickly go through this. 
Identity and access management, everyone knows this. Uh, AWS IAM Identify Center is a single sign on. Everyone knows single sign on service. Then AWS Directory Service. AWS provides two types of directory service. We are also delivering that one with Microsoft Active Directory and AWS Active Directory Service. Then Amazon Concreto is basically an authentication and authorization service that is directly implemented to your application and get authorized and authentication managed by AWS. AWS organization, everyone, everyone knows how we are managing the organization policy based system. AWS resource access manager to access your resource across your AWS accounts. Um, <coughs> Amazon verified permission. This is a good one. Amazon already has now. It's renamed into a security product, it's basically. It's a set of rules. Let's say you need to access uh, some of your team member who is working on a development role in a particular system. You don't need to worry about what are the accesses you need to provide to the system. Amazon is already predefined those things. You just need to search for that role, give assign to it, and this is trusted by Amazon verified permission. You will not see any lack in that. Detective controls, detective controls, Amazon have AWS security hub where you can centralize say, all your security or in your workloads. Amazon guard duty work as an intelligent threat detection tool. Amazon inspector is a vulnerability management tool which is access your vulnerabilities in your infrastructure in a cloud workflows. Uh, then cloud watch, cloud watch basically monitor all your resource utilization and alert you. Uh, Amazon Configuration. This is basically the same configuration review, review that I mentioned earlier being automated by AWS. Then AWS Cloud Realm basically checks the audit logs by the user, whatever, who is doing. So we all, we all manage all these things and we feed this report to our SIP solution and we get alert from our SIP solution if there is any deviation. VPC flow logs, obviously your private cloud or uh, while or inbound and outbound traffic can get the log. Amazon security leg. Amazon security leg uh, is also a combination of security hub, but we have a wide range of workflows that you can take the logs and gather it in a secure workflow and see it. <coughs> then infrastructure controls. The infrastructure controls basically your cloud infrastructure, what are the controllers are there? Uh, firewall manager, network firewall, everyone in Java, I will not take much of your time. Uh, AWS Shield, basically DDoS protection, AWS mobile application firewall, if you are hosting your mobile application, you have to provide an active firewall also. Amazon uh, virtual private cloud, it's, it's very common for everyone. AWS private cloud, AWS private cloud is basically connected to infrastructure privately. But how do we get connected to a private cloud? This involves AWS direct. Connect as well, so that you can connect uh, your uh, your on-premises uh, system to AWS and get a private IP and access your system from there. This was very well in case of some banking finance organization where they need a secret channel of data in private code. Not going to be here now. <coughs> then system manager, it's common way, common AWS verified access. AWS verified access is the same like AWS verified permission. Now you can take the permission, now it's taking the access. Then came to data pro pro protection also. <coughs> In data protection, Amazon Messi is there. Amazon Messi basically it checks when the data is at rest. In your S3, in your device, in your uh, addicts, uh, to cloud, or disk, whenever you are storing your data, when the data is at rest, check whether. Uh, sensitive data if there is some malware uploaded to your S3 and all those kind of vulnerabilities being checked by Amazon S3, Amazon Massive. <coughs> Any guess what is Massive? Why this is named like this? It's, it's, it's called Weapon. Okay. It's Amazon uh, named it as a Massive. It's also called as Weapon. So it's a good weapon for Amazon to protect your data. Then AWS key management service, so definitely you can control our keys or whatever the cryptographic keys are generated, you can manage through this platform. AWS cloud encryption is a hardware uh, security module, hardware based encryption keys that we can generate. Uh, then AWS certificate manager, 
everyone has known you with certificate or email addresses and certificates. AWS Secret Manager, which is to all our secrets for you. Uh, you get solutions on outside education and AWS private certificate also gives you. So all these things we manage are not if the customer is not educated, we even educate the customer and manage these security so that the customer can be safe. Then incident response. So once you get from incident, uh, we have Amazon detective, event, breach, uh, AWS backup, AWS security of all four work together to respond to the incident. And the last, elastic disaster recovery. So disaster recovery is kind of way everyone our about that, but what about the elastic disaster recovery which is always where we now need we are uh, very less time we can recover our data. So mid time to recover is very less. Then compliance. So let the custom is having its infrastructure in AWS or daily the audit going on for the customer to get the compliance document that we can <coughs> get it from the AWS console, from the AWS artifacts, and AWS audit manager. Any compliance report, if it's a PCID, the compliance, or any ISO standard, or the SOC compliance, everything will get from Now we come to our partners for which we, use, we can securely provide the security to our customers. Uh, we have partners with 10 micro clouds, like all these, we have partners in one way, using the product to secure our customers. That's all, I'll not bore you more. Any questions on this? So what about the current data, like the data localization aspect? The data localization aspect is we provide three types of security in our data. If we see data at rest, as you saw, we have Amazon massive. And data in transit, we see the SSL, PSL certificates is there. So we provide all these three as the data localization part. And also in private uh, channel as well. A private channel is in as you say directly connect where you have your own private network to address the flow of data inbound and outbound traffic everything. Okay, thank you.